so the, there's a few questions here that with all the same theme, which is basically price versus the internals at Vesta Client Tick. It seems like that's the biggest um, confusion or confusing point that traders have, which, you know, is uh, rightly so. It's not the easiest thing to um, pick up the nuance, nuances of. Now, a couple of the questions are uh, kind of specific to uh, to a couple of days, so I'll answer those, and then I'll give some general, um, that'll answer the other questions, some general rules about the AD um, and the tick. So basically, Ben's question is, uh, in the current context of ES resuming the bigger picture uptrend, to what extent does the NYSE advanced decline need to be strong, let's say above 1,000, in order for ES to make a new all-time high? Uh, on Tuesday the 17th, which is yesterday, uh, we got a breakout to new highs with the advanced decline only at zero. Have you found the AD line to be less relevant in trending markets? So, okay, here's the thing with this in specific, uh, you know, relation to this specific question. You can make new all-time highs without a strong AD line, right? So you can have a day just like you saw, you know, on yesterday, on Tuesday, where we drove up all the way to 98.75, <clears throat> and yet, and and you, by the way, yesterday is um, on the left hand side there. You see that day uh, right there. You see it hit 98.75. If you look below, you'll see um, the advanced decline was that yellow line is the zero line, and it was only right around zero, even though we were shooting way to new all-time highs. Okay. Um, Okay, so here's the thing. It can make new all-time highs with the AD line at zero. It's just not likely to sustain them. Even on the day time frame, if you're getting kind of a breakout trending move on the day time frame, but as you extend away from yesterday's price action and the morning's price action, you're going to all-time highs, you're breaking through resistance, and yet despite all that, all you have is like zero on the advanced decline line, you know, that's probably not a good time to be buying or holding your long. You know, it's probably going to give a reaction. And, and there are times when you can short that kind of thing. However, that doesn't mean you can't make all-time new highs without it being, you know, strong. So a lot of times you'll get these divergences. And sometimes in very strong trending markets, div- uh, markets divergences will kind of persist a bit before having that breakdown. So the breakdown does not have to come in that same day. Now even on this day, it's not like there was a big breakdown. We we pulled back from 98 to 94. There wasn't a big breakdown. We held the new highs, which is fine. So your question is, you know, have you found that the AD is less relevant in trending markets? No, it's not. Um, it just happens that recently, uh, especially in the last couple of weeks or so, we've just been seeing a lot of divergences. Now, we can't really know the reason for that, why it's happening more recently. Maybe this is kind of a underlying weakness factor that eventually is going to catch up to the market and cause a big decline because this isn't a healthy rally. The reality is we can't know at this point. Um, it could be just a temporary phenomenon that's happening and then things correct and we start really seeing very strong numbers as the market rallies or it just kind of stays like this and eventually causes a large retracement. Uh, we can't tell at this point, but it really doesn't matter because what we care about is the trading of each day since we're, you know, we're day trading. And when we're day trading, you know, we, we just judge it, we can just judge it based on simple rules. Like if it's breaking out like this, like it was on Tuesday to all time new highs and a kind of straight line up move. And throughout all that, we're just getting to zero and we've been negative the whole time, even as we're making new highs you know, get out of your long or don't definitely go, don't go long up there because it's probably not sustainable on that day. At best, it's just going to chop around, right? True trending moves that sustain on that day usually have strong internals. So those are just good rules to, to kind of live by. It doesn't mean like if you see, you know, before making new all-time highs when it was sitting there at 92 and you see neg- negative internals, it doesn't mean it can't break out just because of negative internals. Like you saw, it can but then it won't be sustained afterwards, right? So keep that in mind, and that'll help you kind of understand how it works. Um, and then the next day, you know, if the same thing happened again with weak internals, that move's probably not going to be sustained, but it doesn't mean it can't make an initial move like that. 
but the typical more normal behavior is that on strong moves to all time new highs you'll usually have pretty good in terms all right now Ivan has kind of a similar question um, but based on last Wednesday um, essentially same thing was happening last Wednesday where price was climbing but there was divergences with the advanced decline there was kind of this kind of big disconnect um, and both of those times they were kind of short setups but you're saying I wonder what I'm missing in the big picture by ignoring the price and going along with the internals um, so like IE that was a strong price and um, heading you know and you were seeing these divergences the, the difference was that price was running into major resistance you were balance highs that's why it's a good short setup so nothing's in a vacuum when you're looking at the internals right so if you were seeing um, you know if you were seeing strong internals but price is hitting major resistance that could still fail if you're seeing weak internals but prices off to all-time new highs with no resistance that can extend a bit before so really and this is going to answer Vitor has a question and so does Rob both having difficulties deciding which one gets more weight is it the price or is it the internals what do we look for and kinda let me give you guys all some rules of thumb that are going to help you with interpreting the internals okay basically you can kind of create them as rules and remove a lot of the confusion about internals so here's here's the deal most of the time you're probably over interpreting the internals like if you are not going long for instance at a support zone just because we're a minus 1000 on the advanced decline you are over interpreting the internals that doesn't mean anything if we had a decent sized down move let's say we drop 12 points and the advanced decline drops to minus 1200 that's not something bad a big drop is usually going to cause a big drop in the advanced decline so it's not giving you any extra information so that doesn't mean you you can't buy it if it's a strong support zone and we're temporarily exhausted and it's an overall bullish market that could still be a great buy right so you don't want to over interpret the advanced decline or the tick in that manner what you want to do especially with the advanced decline here are I'll give you like three rules for it pretty much don't it kind of I'm gonna say ignore it but I what I mean by ignore it is don't give it any extra weight in your decision-making unless it has one of three things is happening one it's at a true extreme like close to plus 2000 or minus 2000 you know what those mean okay that means there's much more likely sustained directionality or for potential for trend number two there's some kind of a big divergence like price is making new highs and it doesn't be all-time highs just let's say new highs on the day or a new swing high and yet the advanced decline is not being able to at all that's something to a lot of times pay attention to and then three if there's an actual disconnect between the, the advanced decline and the price for instance if we closed let's say at 2096 on the previous day and now we open you know two points lower tiny little gap down not a big deal you would expect the internals maybe to be zero or slightly negative and yet you look and they're minus 1000 that would be a disconnect that would be a lot more weakness underneath the surface than you're seeing from the S&P and that would often be a good reason for a potential short the reality is that price usually has the upper hand and obviously it's it's the primary thing that we look at but when there's such an extreme disconnect underneath the surface, right? If it is extreme like that, where for us it's like we're at in line with yesterday's close and yet we're at minus 1,000 the advanced decline, well, why is that the case? I mean, there's a lot more weakness than we underneath the surface than we see. That that means most likely, you know, price will end up following the internals if it's that much of an extreme. Okay, often that's what happens. So if you limit your interpretation of the NYSE advanced decline to just those kind of three scenarios, 
like most of the time it's not really telling you anything new whether it's weak or it's strong if it's weak because there was a big down move it's nothing new if it's strong because there was a big up move it's nothing new right like ie it, you should not um, not short it just because the advanced decline is strong as unless it's like, like at plus 2000 it could be a plus 1300 after a strong up move but that strong up move is slamming into a major resistance and maybe the other markets aren't following or maybe just contextually you're in a strong down market and that's still short for instance you know or vice versa a strong down move and you're in a strong up market overall in the bigger picture and it's a great support zone that could be a buy because the market could be exhausted so it's irrelevant basically what the advanced decline is doing right so that's how usually you want to look at it when do you want to pay attention to the advanced decline if there's a big divergence let's say we make new lows on the day and yet the advanced decline is really holding up well above its lows even if it's negative right maybe it's really holding up well and it's not making new lows on the day but it's not following price and it's a decent sized divergence that you would take note of and that's potentially you know something where again price is tanking down but advanced decline isn't isn't and that could be a good buy for instance um, so that's one two is the absolute level disconnect where price is at a certain point in relation to yesterday's close but the advanced decline is at just as a, at an abnormal level like way stronger or way weaker than it should be that tells you something and it's usually again price that will follow when it's that much of a disconnect in advanced decline and three when it's at an extreme and at all other times essentially ignore it because it's not telling you anything new if you can do that you know that's you know both for you Vitor and Rob um, that will be probably the best way to essentially you know not let the advanced decline confuse you or, or, or overweigh it too much only really pay attention to it in those instances and at all other times just trust trust price a lot more in those instances trust that the advanced decline could be telling you something that price is not showing you in and of itself okay and you know it's not always going to work nothing's 100 percent in trading sometimes you'll see for instance a, a nice divergence like price makes a new low the advanced decline diverges but yet price keeps going down and then the advanced decline catches up that's like don't if that happens once don't now distrust all the other times that you see a divergence most of the time if you see a good divergence in the right context it makes sense to buy so obviously knowing like in the right context means you know there has to be a reason to buy overall anyway like whether it's a good support zone or an overall bullish market whatever it is right so it's not in a vacuum you don't want to be doing this oh there's a divergence just buy it randomly anywhere has to be at a decent area on the chart and in the right contextual environment then okay then you trust it if it fails once don't now start distrusting it every time and thinking no now price is always going to lead most of the time when it's that kind of a disconnect price catches up you know the other way so just keep trusting it if you do it systematically most of the time it works a few times it'll it'll fail that's fine but at least every other time you keep doing it systematically you'll catch all the winners from the times it works okay and that's the key in trading